I think that a PhD is stressful for three primary reasons. That is expectations, comparison, and identity wrapped up with ego. And there are two other sort of like lesser known but very important reasons why a PhD is super stressful. And I'm gonna share those with you in this video and also how I would combat them so you can be stress-free throughout your entire PhD and academic career. This video is brought to you by my brand new website and community, Academia Insider. Now, I started this because I just saw a complete uh, need to bring people together from this YouTube channel to share their struggles, to help each other out. And I am in the forum, the members only community every single day answering questions. And uh, I'd love for you to be a part of that. So I'll put a link in the description. But also, if you want more information, remember to sign up to my newsletter at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter and there I'll be sharing all of the information about Academia Insider but also all of the insider tips and tricks, the information I don't publish anywhere else. You can get it all on that newsletter and when you sign up the first thing you'll get is a daily planner so you can be as efficient as possible every single day. The first major reason why a PhD is so stressful is expectations. Not only the expectation from yourself that you impose, but also the expectations that people around you have about a PhD. So, uh, you know, yourself, you kind of start a project and your expectations are sky high. You know, you hope you're gonna be the one where the PhD is gonna be a breeze. You know, you're clever enough to get it all done. And then as that kind of like, goes through the, the first year, the second year, you start to question that assumption and you're like, hmm, this isn't as easy as I thought. And then you start thinking, oh, maybe I'm not able to do this and that's terrible. And it's really kind of a, a downward spiral once you allow those thoughts to become your perceived reality. And the second expectation is from outside. Like when you start a PhD, Everyone around you, no one really knows what a PhD is unless you do it, unless they've done it themselves. So for example, um, I was the first person in my whole family to go to university. And for some reason, I was uh, a glutton for punishment. I decided to go all the way through to a PhD. So not only did my family not have an idea about what university really was, but also like what a PhD was. You know, to them, a PhD was something where it was kind of an extension of study. And I remember people saying to me, oh, are you still studying? Studying. Like it was kind of like, oh, you're still in uni or still in school. Um, and yeah, it was a little bit kind of uh, disheartening, I guess, to be like, oh, I'm a PhD student, being very proud of myself. And then the expectation is that I'm just still in school. Um, and that can kind of make it a little bit stressful, people's assumptions about what you're doing. Um, and then for the people that do know what you're doing, the expectation is because you're clever, you're going to breeze through, like you are going to be sort of uh, super able to do this and it's going to be no problem for you. And uh, that's when that imposter syndrome can really sort of like filter in. So go check out my other video where I talk about imposter syndrome, um, because it can really kind of play on your, uh, you know, motivation and your ability to get through because you're there and you're like, Oh my god, I cannot believe I'm here. And everyone's expecting me to finish and I don't think I can. And Oh my god, it's only, I'm only here because I've accidentally landed here. And I'm going to be found out as an imposter at any moment. Um, those things, you know, can make a a PhD really stressful. Uh, and yes, expectations. So the way I get around this is by just being brutally honest with myself about, you know, the fact that uh, I am in the bell curve and I sit in the middle and that, you know, it's very unlikely I'm the cleverest person ever to go through this PhD. But also the good thing is that I'm very unlikely to be the worst person ever to do a PhD at this institution. And uh, just realizing that everyone's struggle is unique and uh, essentially not listening or not uh, sort of giving any airtime or any sort of like uh, weight to other people's expectations on what you're going to be doing as your PhD. You know, it's just other people's opinions. You are the one in the driver's seat pushing through. It's easier said than done, but uh, you know, having that kind of stoic mindset really has helped me kind of push through what people expect of me and also allow me to be very kind on the expectations that I set for myself. The second big reason a PhD is stressful is because of comparison. 
Oh, like in the academic world, at least in, in science and in chemistry, we always kind of looked at the H index, at how we kind of compare each other. You know, you're always up against other people. It's definitely not a win-win game, academia. It seems like if someone else gets the grant, you don't get the grant. If someone else is able to publish in an awesome paper, it takes away from your success. Um, and this constant comparison with everything that's going on outside is very unhelpful and can make a PhD very, very stressful. Um, and so just, you know, comparing your project and the progress of your project with someone else is, you know, unless you're the one that is actually doing really well, and then it is fabulous, you feel on top of the world. But for the other person looking at you, it just feels a bit rubbish, you know, they can't, uh, they can't kind of get past the fact that you're ahead or if you're looking at someone who's doing better than you, then it's really hard to just kind of go, well, they've had their own internal struggles and they've had their own success, but it doesn't detract from my success and my ability to get through whatever I'm going through right now. So yes, constant comparison. And the problem is the academic system encourages comparison. The number of papers, the H index, the impact factor journals that you, um, you publish in and you know how successful you are moving up the career ladder. All of that is just comparison, you know, and also we normally stick a timeline to it. So if you're early career research, this is where you're meant to be. And this is the cohort you're in. And you know, you compare yourself to that cohort and then you get to middle career and then you're like, oh no, I'm here. And then you go further. It just doesn't stop. So comparison is what makes a PhD so stressful, but just staying in your own game and just comparing yourself to how you performed last year, last six months, that is the way to get through that comparison problem. Always try to better yourself. Compare yourself to where you were a year ago, and that is the only comparison that really makes sense. The third reason a PhD is stressful is because it is now your identity. If you have managed to get to the point where you can enter a PhD um, scholarship or a PhD position and you know, you've gone all, you've gone through all the exams, you've done the undergraduate stuff, you've essentially built yourself up to be this clever person. And it's stressful because when things don't start going your way, you know, maybe in the second year, you feel like you should be further ahead, your experiments are falling apart, your, your supervisor's being mean, and that relationship's decaying, you start really questioning yourself. You really have this kind of internal struggle and this existential crisis all combined together where you're just like, oh my God, I thought I was the clever one. Oh my God, why is it not going the way that I thought? Or I cannot believe that um, I, I thought I could do this, you know, all of that stuff, all those internal voices just just keep um, kind of shouting and they seem to get louder and louder the more that you listen to them and, and you accept them as a reality and not just kind of your, your mind protecting you. Um, and so yes, you have wrapped yourself up not only as uh, like an academic, but also the success that you you uh, tie to your own identity of, you know, you've been you've able to uh, pass exams and do really well and get into different courses and blah, blah, blah. And that becomes Comes this little ball and the moment that you kind of prick it and it kind of starts to peel apart you go oh my god who am I why am I here why am I doing this am I really clever no the fourth reason a PhD is stressful is because you are entering the unknown you do not know what the results of your experiment or your research is going to show you because then it would not be research. It would just be saying what you're going to achieve, you know, and it's really hard to deal with the failure that kind of is inevitable as you progress through academia and your project. Um, the unknown is scary no matter what it is, but it's even scarier when that unknown entity can dictate how you feel about yourself or it can dictate, you know, whether or not you're going to finish your PhD. And the unknown is incredibly scary and uh, you just have to tackle each problem as it comes up. And I always used to say to uh, masters and PhD students that I was supervising or co-supervising, I'd always say like, PhD or academia, you're essentially just solving problems. But the problem is, is that you do not know which problems are going to be coming up next. And it's problems that you didn't even realize you'd have to solve. And that is the unknown and the nature of doing 
uh, higher research and doing a PhD or masters. So yes, it really is super, super uh, scary, but just taking each problem at a time, tackling it, that is how you combat the unknown and you just roll with the punches. You just have to be like a boxer and dive and duck and weave and uh, that can be very, very stressful and it can be tiring. So you do have to look after yourself along the way. Now, the fifth thing that I don't see enough people talking about is that our brains expect linear results. Like we put a certain amount of effort in and we expect the same amount of effect or outcome. And that's just not how the world works in any sense. You know, there are a few things, short-term projects where you put effort in and you get the, the results that you want, boom, you're done. But the problem is, is that as these projects get longer, the, the, the kind of feedback isn't linear. It's actually much more exponential. And so we kind of know about this. You know how you've in the past, you've done projects and it kind of all comes together at the end. A PhD is kind of no different really um, in the fact that in the first couple of years, you feel like you're making hardly any progress at all. But what you're doing is you're failing, you're laying the foundations for success, you're building up your knowledge base so that you can be lucky in that end of the second year, in the third year, or like fourth year even if you're you know, in the States. Um, and yes, having that linear response is what we expect, but it is not, it is exponential. And so it's this aspect that can make a PhD really stressful, especially in the early stages, because an exponential sort of curve, even though you're putting in loads of effort early on, you barely see any results. It's not until the final bit of your PhD that you start to kind of really see that compound interest of all the failures, all the things you've learned, all of the um, all of the things you've decided to let go and no longer investigate. You're now putting energy into the stuff that is working and you see that result go up. But uh, in the early stage, especially sort of in the second year, I think that's why that second year slump happens. So go check out my other video about the second year slump. But um, yeah, I feel like it's really that time where you're like, hang on, I've put two years of hardcore effort in, but I've not seen that same linear response that my brain is expecting. Instead, what you're starting to do is see a little bit of progress and that'll accelerate up into the end of your PhD. And that can make a PhD really stressful. So I always look at people's successes and uh, expect to see them linearly, but they're not. If you look at how people earn money, if you look at how businesses grow, there are a ton of um, things that are out in the real world that are exponential and a PhD and the results of or getting to the end of any big project is always, in my experience, exponential. You don't see the returns until the very end and that can make it very stressful. But at least knowing that, acknowledging it and uh, sort of uh, understanding that the early stages are gonna be very tough and you're not gonna see that linear feedback that you expect, that has helped me a lot with a load of long-term projects that I have undertaken. So there we have it. There are all the reasons I think a PhD is particularly stressful. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also remember to go check out academiainsider.com because it's something that I am very proud to have launched. And over the next few weeks and months, I'll be growing out that website and the community will be growing alongside it so that uh, essentially, Academia is no longer stressful or lonely. Um, it's about bringing people together that share the same kind of ethics as this YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing the community grow. It's already off to a stellar start. And uh, yes, go join or at least go check it out. So um, I shall see you in the next video.